guys, this is Etan Sun from Sunbros. Today I'm really excited to be bringing you guys this brand new video, but before we get started with that, I want to make sure I remind you guys on how to get entered in for a chance to win our guaranteed skin giveaways that we do every Sunday night during our one hour question and answer live stream. All you got to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and comment below with your in-game name and which skin you'd like to receive on either the NA or EU servers under 700 vouchers. And remember, the more videos that you do this with that are uploaded each week, the higher chance you have to win. All right, guys, I'm hanging out again here with Cal, and we are getting ready to talk about part two of the weekly update video in which we're discussing all the incredible hero changes coming to Arena Valor in what is being called the biggest patch ever to the game. So, Cal, what's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? Are you ready to break down a, a plethora of hero changes? I got my notes. I read over them. I'm good. Okay, we're going to let the world know all what's going on. So we're going to do this in a four-phase system. We're going to discuss what's going on, and we're going to ask four questions. Number one, is it a buff or is it a nerf? Number two, how does it affect you if you're playing L'Oreal, or, or if you're playing the hero, rather? How does it affect you if you're playing that hero? How does it affect you if you're playing against that hero? So you know how it changes those kinds of things. And uh, we're, Cal and I are going to give it a rating from 1 to 10 of how severe the buff or nerf is. Uh, you ready to go, Cal? I am ready. Okay, so change number one. I think you uh, gave away a spoiler there on who's coming first. Yeah. Hero number one, who could it be? Never know. Oh, it's L'Oreal. Okay, so L'Oreal's change comes to her passive Divine Punishment. So previously, Divine Punishment used to cost a slow of 90% that gradually decreased to 50%. And now it's a... It just, gra it just gradually decreased the no slow at all. And now it's a fixed 50% slow. Um, okay, so that is a nerf. It's it's a steady one second slow as opposed to a gradually decreasing slow. But 90% to start off is a severe slow. That is very heavy slow. Um, I'm going to real quick just point out that they updated the verbiage of the blink ability to be very clear that she becomes invincible for a short period of time when she's blinking um, and then they updated some visual effects to her ultimate smite that creates a much uh, easier to see circle on the ground that's going to be more highlighted in the game so it's uh, not mistakable so let's talk about the nerf to divine punishment a, a decrease in her slow is going to do a couple so if you're playing as L'Oreal how is it going to affect you well I would say that what's definitely going to happen is it's going to be a lot harder to well when, when L'Oreal ults and she's kind of going bananas remember she gets her her abilities back over and over again and enemies that are hit by her abilities become marked every four marks trigger an explosion so part of what makes her ultimate so good is that she can spam her ability so fast that the passive goes off pretty pretty frequently during her ultimate phase and part of what gets them caught and stuck in you know being near l'oreal is that 90 percent slow 90 percent is a severe slow that effectively virtually stuns them close enough to where l'oreal can keep hitting them with abilities and if she can have that thing go off more than one time in a very short period of time you get slowed by 90 percent twice even if it does decrease it's it hampers your movement speed a lot guys so having that reduced to 50% for one second isn't nearly as bad. It gives me the ability to kind of get away and then, you know, try to get out of it happening again a lot easier. So it's going to be harder to have these explosions stack go one after the other. And it's going to be uh, harder for for her to really get those things kind of uh, snowballing out of control where she can just keep getting you locked down because she can keep causing an explosion because remember it's not just your explosion if an enemy explodes near you you still get the these um it's all nearby enemies get get the damage and slows so it's kind of a chain reaction where it happens to x guy then it happens to y guy then it happens to z guy and everyone's getting true damage and everyone's getting slowed and it's just continual chaos well now at 50 percent it's a lot easier to get out of that mess and then the snowballing effect won't happen nearly as bad. So I think it's definitely going to affect uh, L'Oreal in a big way. And if you're playing against L'Oreal, it gives you a much bigger opportunity to escape her when she's doing her thing. When she's ulting and she's going bananas, not getting slow by 90% gives you a much better opportunity to get out of dodge and, uh, and kind of reset yourself and get to safety. So having said all that, Cal, I would say the effect 
is on a scale of one to ten is probably a seven. Yeah, I'd have or to eight. agree. The only thing I'd add is they actually updated the visual of her ultimate circle. So not only do you have people not quite as slowed so they can get out of it a little easier they also have a, a better awareness that it's happening that right. she's thrown down that mm -hmm. ult in the big middle of a big team fight so so they go wow there's this huge circle it's very obvious that she's ulting and i have a better chance of getting out of it by having effectively almost 50 percent less movement speed you know decrease right. on yourself uh, to me this is a huge huge i think it's an i think i i would say seven to eight i'll go with eight it's an eight nerf I think it's going to affect L'Oreal's overall gameplay pretty pretty substantially. Yeah, I'll, I'll say 7-5. You would. Um, okay. Next comes the change to another mage. And that's going to be Toolin the Pure. All right, so Toolin has a nerf coming also to his passive Thunderclap. Um, and this is really a reduction in damage. Right now, the damage is 320 plus 0.52 AP scaling and plus 40 per level. It used to be 350 plus 0.52 plus 40 per level. So it's really going to just nerf the damage of Thunderclap early game. And if we're being honest, it was a little bit overpowered early game anyways. Um, so how does this affect? So this is a nerf, flat nerf. Um, they also fixed some bugs that affected Thunderclap, ultimately making it stronger than intended. So there were some bugs that were making the, the passive already stronger than it should have been. So they fixed those and they also reduce the damage. So how does this affect Tulin? People who are playing Tulin, well, it's gonna make you a little bit weaker early game. It's not 30 damage flat, it's 30 damage per lightning bolt. Which, if you hit all four of them, um, you know, it can, what is it, four or five lightning bolts? I wanna say it's four. Five lightning bolts. So that's 150 damage you're, you're losing on his passive going off. That's not really anything to uh, to frown upon or to look down. That's a lot of damage to lose early game. By end game, it'll still be 150 damage, but 150 damage end game isn't really as big because the the way that it grows at 0.52 AP ratio and 40 per level still stays the same. So, um, I already think that Tulin was taking a backseat to L'Oreal and some of the and Liliana and some of the new mages that have come out recently. So I've already think he's kind of fallen off top tier for me. But now I think this this is going to hurt his ability to farm early game. It's going to hurt his ability to win early game trades a little bit. Uh, 150 damage early game is a lot of damage, and I think it's going to definitely be a detriment. So don't be nearly as uh, as fearless with tool in early game as you used to be because now you're doing a substantial amount less damage. Um, as far as playing against Tulin, I don't know that it changes how you play against Tulin. I think it's you may have a slight... Uh, it should make Tulin players a little bit less... Um, you know, balls deep, a little less aggressive, but I don't know that it's going to make people playing against Tulin less conservative against him early game. He's still going to be strong. Um, this, if you do get caught by Tulin, it may just not kill you, but it's still going to hurt you really badly. So uh, on a scale of one to 10, I say that the nerf is probably closer to a three or four. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think it, it's fairly mild all in all, but it does shape his early game quite a bit. He's always been a really good laner, but where mm -hmm. this nerf to me really comes in isn't about killing minions at all. It's in early game, Tulin was an excellent roamer. He would suddenly show sure. up in top or bottom lane to assist with a gank. He has this incredible burst from this early game ability, and it always felt like if he showed up, somebody was going to die. And so nerfing him a little in that early game, those first few levels when snowballs start taking effect, I think it will affect the team. Uh, I don't think it's it's a huge nerf. All in all, it's fairly flat damage. But I think it will be noticeable that you don't see quite as many snowballing tunes. I So I do agree that it definitely affects his roaming a little bit. But I think that the biggest thing about it is Tulin is such a big time bully early game in lane and i think this just takes a little bit of that sting off so all right next we are coming into yet another mage and this was the best mage in the game kali jk jk uh so they updated the names and descriptions of all kali's abilities which is interesting powerful hymns soul of summoning spiritual blessing ethereal pulse so all all new names and all new descriptions they increase the magic damage of damnation, which is now not an ability anymore. So I'm not sure <laughs> which one that is. 
Um, it increases the magic damage of damnation from 0 plus 180 and 0.480 to 40. Let's see if we can... I don't know. Let's call it what it is. I have no clue. Uh, uh, let me bring up the Cal supercomputer here and see what I can find. Okay, so while Cal's looking that up, I'll read you guys the... Decreases magic damage dealt by Ethereal Blame. It's all spelled wrong. Ethereal Pulse is the is the one I think they're talking about. Damnation was her passive. Okay, Damnation was her passive, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm a little lost on this one. Um, okay. The original, the original passive said normal attacks have a pierce effect of 157 magic damage. So it used to be 0 plus 180 plus 0.4 AP. So if we go to her attributes page, we'll probably find out that that was a lot of what it is. So she starts out with 157 attack damage. So that is exactly right, Cal. So now it's 157 okay. plus the 40 flat, so 197. So good job, Cal, for figuring that out. So she okay. gained 40 straight damage pierce on her passive, which isn't, which is nothing to, to shy about. I mean, every auto attack on a mage is 40 extra damage. It's nice. Decreases, decrease magic damage dealt by eternal blame. Is that one of her old abilities? That, that was her first ability. Okay. Uh, it was where she desecrates the target area, dealing magic damage every half second to all enemies in the area, slowing their movement speed by a very low amount, 10%. So they uh, nerfed the damage. Two seconds. Yes. They, it used to start at 160, now it starts at 135, it looks like. And then the scaling is uh, is also a little bit less. So it used to be 0.35 AP, now it's 0.31. So they nerfed the first ability. They buffed their first ability. Decreased magic damage dealt by each Wraith wave. Uh, so they, this is actually pretty nerfy. Right, Grievance there. was her ultimate, by the way, with the big frenzy of 55 Wraiths. Okay, so they decreased the damage. They shortened the delay after casting of eternal blame they raised the camera angle on grievance to offer extra line of sight that i like okay and then they fixed a bug where only one in every two waves of race was effective in Grievance. so now two times as many waves of race are going to trigger damage but they do less damage overall so if you're playing as kali uh she still sucks balls um, you but can still step to the side. You can still dodge her ult super easily by just being aware of what's happening. Um, more of her shots from her ult are going to land and hit, but they're going to do less damage. They went from 110 starting to 1.7 uh, 270 ending to 70 starting to 110 ending, and then they changed. They lowered the AP ratio. So, um, and they fixed the okay. So it, it's um, it's a nerf and a buff. In one. They gave her a little bit better early game. Yeah, but they're... We'll have to see really what happens to the ult. If you're playing against Kali, just avoid her ultimate still. The, the little circle um, damage she does from her ability soul summoning is now going to be less. Um, her auto attacks are going to do a little bit more damage. She's still Kali, so don't, don't fear. Just play smart. Um, <clears throat> One thing that the that they added in the notes section is, is her ultimate should be hitting for about 50% more damage because all of them should be hitting. Uh, there was a bug in the ultimate where even though there was wave after wave of these wraiths coming in, most of them never actually hit the person. And that's why it always felt like her ultimate just didn't really do much to people is because it wasn't. So they fixed that. So her ultimate should actually be hitting for a decent amount now. Okay, so this is a buff. It's still Kali, and it's still her ultimate, so I feel like the the buff is not super... I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 on the buff rating. Yeah, I, I'd go with a, I'll go with a 5 in my case. I, she needed some help, um, but at the same time, they nerfed her in some other ways. <clears throat> the one thing that I do uh, think is worth pointing out it, that I like is on that ultimate. They gave her 40% more increased line of sight. That can be actually really helpful. Anytime you can get extra vision on the map is a good thing. So does it zoom out when, um, zoom out a little bit when she ults or something? What to see? Yeah, that? yeah. You remember in uh, League of Legends, they had the, the guy with the really yeah, yeah, yeah. long cannon shot type thing. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, sense. basically Makes like sense. that. Yeah, it'd be like that. She'll get increased uh, range of vision while she's spraying down the lane. All right. Next up is another mage, and it is Preta. <clears throat> okay, so Prada got a buff uh, a couple different ways, so let's go talk about them. 
Um, the damage dealt by Plague Spectre has gone has undergone a fundamental change. So the Plague Spectre is his first ability, the one that charges up a Plague Spectre and shoots it out, and it does an F ton of damage if it charges up all the way and you get hit by it. Previously, it used to have a base damage of 360 plus 90 per level plus 0.55 AP ratio. Um, after charging, so the if you charge it for two full seconds, it did double damage. Charging for less than two seconds just did the base amount of damage. Now, the base damage is 216. Looks like it's 240 on here. Um, <clears throat> plus 54 per level, plus 0.33 AP uh, ratio. So, <clears throat> it start, the base damage is less, but it charges up over two seconds to a total of 300% damage. So, the, the total amount of damage it can do is, um, is way more. And the, more, the total amount of damage it'll do at one second charge instead of two. Is way more, but the, the amount of damage it'll do if you just launch it immediately is less. Um, the majority of good prey to players are good at charging up that ability and hitting it. So, uh, <clears throat> definitely a buff in my opinion for sure. Uh, they also reduce the attack speed, or no, they reduce the speed at which the range warning line extends for Plague Spectre. So, Plague Spectre used to pop up a massive lo two lines, this whole like wave area that would show up. In a, I don't know, red or green color that would warn you, hey, you're about to get effed, watch out. Um, <clears throat> so they've reduced the speed at which the range warning line extends. Um, so it'll be, I think it'll be a little bit harder to see and a little bit, uh, yes. you'll have a little less time it, to dodge. It, it, those lines were basically a huge, like, you need to move uh, warning if you were playing against Breda. And so <laughs> if, if those show up a little bit later, just slightly even, it would make a huge difference to getting hit by it or not. They also reduce the casting time. So just, just to hit it immediately, it used to take 0.8 seconds. Now it's 0.4 seconds to hit it immediately. And then it builds up from that point to the 300% damage at two seconds. Um, <clears throat> pretty interesting. I actually think this is a pretty big buff to Prey does. Prey does who know how to play him well, know how to get that thing off at full, at full damage. Now it's gonna do a lot more damage. And um, I think it's gonna be a big time difference maker for them. So if you're playing as Prey to, um, you're gonna find the first ability to be a lot more useful. You're gonna find it to be easier to utilize, and you're gonna find it to be hitting a lot harder when you get it off at full at the full two second uh, charge up time. When playing against him, it's gonna be harder to dodge, um, <clears throat> but you're going to be able to get if somebody's just insta casting it, you'll get hit by it for less damage, but you're gonna have to really be on your toes because Prey Deco is gonna be able to hit you even harder with that ability than he did before. Um, so, on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give this buff a seven. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree. I'll, I'll say it, I'll say a, I was gonna go with a six, but actually, yeah, it is pretty, a 300% instead of double damage. That's huge. Because and it most, scales, most so if you don't is, hold it down all the way, it still oh, gives you was, a damage bonus. That was the thing before, mm. is casting it for a full two seconds gave people lots of time to get out of it. Yes. If you can charge it off at a second and a half and you get a percentage of that damage you, instead you get, of you, losing you, it all down yep. to base damage, that is huge because Praetor's charge time is so long. It's two seconds, man, it's a long time. That's a long time when people are flying across the map and trying to So if you could charge it for one second and still do double damage or charge it for one and a half seconds and do 250% oh, yeah. damage, it's still it's sick. Gives a lot of flexibility for Preda. So Preda, <clears throat> good good buff. Next, we are moving on to Natalia, another mage. Okay, so they- A lot of mage change. A lot of mage change. They, they reduce the cost of her Arcane Nova, which is her second ability. Um, they reduced the, the, substantially from 80, about 10 per level is what they did. They reduced 10 mana per level. They reduced the cooldown of Arcane Nova, which is crazy because that's the ability that stuns Cal. From 12 yeah. starting off to eight and a half, and from and it still ends at seven seconds. So they reduced the oh, early game. cooldown early game. <clears throat> In my mind, this is a pretty large buff. It is. Um, it, it really is. Then they increased the flying speed of Arcane Spirits, which is her first ability, which already was really fast. It is. Her line I shots. Know. They already they were already really fast, so they make that even faster from um, 11, um, essentially 11 meters a second to 13 meters a second. 
Um, <clears throat> and now when Natalia uses Lethal Rays, it removes all crowd control effects upon casting. That's her ultimate. So um, she actually frees herself from all crowd control effects while casting it. And I, if I believe correctly, she's immune to crowd control effects while the shield lasts anyway. So this is actually a huge buff. So I wonder now is if she's stunned, if she's still going to be able to cast her ultimate and free herself of. I mean, that's that is a massive. In, in the buff. in the notes, they said yes, she can cast lethal rays while under control effects. Wow, <clears throat> that's a big so, buff. This this to me all around is a big buff. They her reduced cooldown arcane nova helped a lot in the early game and still ended exactly where it began. And the the even faster first, so the people that were dodging it probably won't anymore. And then you finally have something that's gonna break crowd control effects, and then allow her to use that. That is the number ultimate. one thing against. Oh, her. absolutely. Yeah, I, I used absolutely. to be able to stun her and kill her before she really figured out what the hell was going on. Now it's not an option. Yeah, to to be able to break a crowd control can be a game changer for her. Interesting. Yeah, this is a big buff. Uh, okay, so if you're playing as Natalia, now you can... If Wukong jumps you and stuns you with his ultimate, you can just ult him right back to get out of it. And then he won't be able to do anything to you. While you're shielded and immune to crowd control. I mean, that's a big deal, man. Um, so if you're at, if you're playing as Natalia, your level 4 spike is massive now. And you just got a whole lot better. Natalia just got a massive buff. If you're playing against Natalia, watch the F out, man. She's going to be able yeah. to cast that ball ability a lot more frequently, which is just more and more stuns. Um, she's going to be able to get out of all your crowd control and remain free of crowd control while she's melting your face. So I'm yeah. going to give this a buff of a, of a 9. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree. I was going to say it's at least an 8 or a 9. This is moving somebody that was arguably tier 2, maybe, and moving them higher. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is some big changes for her. So I, I'm actually really interested in trying her now again. I, I kind of dismissed her, but now this is really mm. making me want to. Life is really good to her. I'm sure she's going to really like this. Um, all right, moving on to the next mage, we have Jin Arm. All right, so they changed the damage reduction of Nirvana. So that is going to be his ultimate. Right now, or it's not, okay. Nirvana, they changed the damage reduction of Nirvana based on the number of enemy heroes in the area. Uh, at uh, the moment, the ability is used. Provides a corresponding damage reduction based on the number of enemy heroes in the area for the duration of the Nirvana. So it's based on how many are near you while the ult is going off. Which I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and it's probably a buff overall. Rescaled movement speed bonus from Nirvana from 70% for what it has seconds to 80%. For half, I mean, that's also a buff. Um, it's, yeah, 80, it's 80 it, that it declines decline, over two and a half seconds, but it's but longer get, and it starts higher. But you get a little higher right at the at the beginning, <clears throat> and when you're using that extra speed, you need the fastest speed you can get, even if it is declining, because when the first second of a speed movement buff is when you need it, not the end of it. And then they increase the cooldown of Nirvana from 30 um, to 36, to 25 to 32, and 28 to uh, from 20 at level three. Um, so if you're playing as Jinnar, his ultimate is more powerful now. You have more movement speed for a longer amount of time, uh, and you have uh, you're going to overall be beefier. You're gonna have more damage reduction because it's based on who's around you, which is which is how it should be. Unless you were getting off his ult like right next to five people and then they were scattering. I mean, for the most part, you want it to be about who's near you. So. I say this is a buff. I think if it's Nirvana, I think if you're playing as Jin Arm, you're going to feel a little more confident to use his ult. Um, it's not like a massive buff though. If you're playing against him, um, you know, if he starts ulting, you probably want to scatter a little bit and give it time to go down before you go in and kill him. So on a scale of one to ten, I say this is probably a four buff, like a, a four. What do you think? I, I, I'm going to go with a three on the grounds that the increased cooldown time. He, he can't. He, it true. seemed like, especially at the third level of it of 20 seconds, like he always had it available every time you'd meet him. Now at almost 30 seconds at the third level, that's quite a, quite a nerf. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right, next we have Crixie, another mage getting a change. Let's see what we got going on now. They... 
Decrease the movement speed bonus provided by Flutter, which is her passive. When Crazy hits an enemy with an ability, she gains a movement speed. So they decrease that from 30 to 25 percent. So it's a 5 percent reduction in movement speed. But it, it is an important part of her kit. It helps her, you know, stay out of danger. Um, they increase the magic damage of Mischief, which is her first ability. They increase it from 320 um, at level 1 to 350. And then it just only went up 5 by the end at level 6, from si from 695 to 700. So it, it, it's really meant to help the early game out. She's going to be a little bit stronger yes. early game. And then her ultimate got to change. Moonfall can now be casted when there are no surrounding targets. And Moonfall now provides a 15% movement speed bonus for the duration of the ability. Um, so it said that she, she increased her movement speed. Uh, she used to not get an increase in movement speed at all, I don't think. <clears throat> so now she's going to be... Well, that's one of the things. When Crixie ults, you just got to try to get out of dodge. Well, now she has an increase in movement speed. So I think it actually stacks. So the 25% she gets from her passive when she hits an enemy with an ability will like her passive along with the 15% she's getting for just hitting her ultimate it sounds like she's going to have a 40% uh, movement speed buff while she's ulting which is going to help her stay in range of enemies and they're going to have a much harder time escaping so if you're playing as Crixie you got more early game damage from your ultimate and you're going to be able to stay closer to enemies and make sure they don't get away from you a lot easier if you're playing against Crixie you're probably going to need to figure out something else to do to not get killed by our ultimate. You probably won't be able to outrun it. Even if you die, dive away or teleport or dodge or flicker. Sounds like she's going to have the movement speed to catch up with you. So, you know, might have to stun her. You might have to go at her instead of trying to get away. Overall, this is a couple of buffs, I think, to her ultimate and her first ability, which is her main things. <clears throat> her early game was her weakest part about her. So I'm glad they gave her a little buff there. I think it makes sense. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I think this is probably a buff of about 6. And the reason I'm going 6, even though it's only a 30, you know, a 30 extra damage early, the AP scaling is the same, and it's just a movement speed buff, because I think that was one of the things about her that was easiest to avoid. Her, her ultimate is a pretty hard-hitting ultimate, but it can be fairly easy to avoid, and I feel like they've really made it a lot harder to avoid now. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I'm going to go with a 7, because... Uh, and I do that on the scale of Crixie, not compared to other heroes. I think for her, these were really shoring up her, her uh, short fallings. I think that getting the extra movement speed so she can chase down a team fight while continuing to spray down and giving her that early game extra damage for laning is huge for her. So I, I th I'm excited to see how she's going to end up in the meta now. All right, and we move on to the next mage because they're all getting changed, and that is going to be Ignis, the Anointed One. All right, guys, so Sacred Flame, which is his second... Wait, no, it's passive. Um, Sacred Flame now provides a 50 yeah. HP, plus 5 per level, plus, 0, uh, plus 0.1 AP regen when a mark is triggered. So when you trigger a mark on an enemy, you're not going to gain health back. Um... At level 10, it'll be 100 plus your AP, plus 10% of your AP. So let's say you get 500 AP, I mean, you're talking about 150 health maybe. Every time that the, that's, I mean, it could trigger, you know, on two or three people at the same time. So it's not a small amount, it's, it's free health. It's a buff. Um, they decrease yeah. the shield points provided from uh, by Fire Crash. So you used to get a shield from the first ability Fire Crash. Um, they decreased it from... Let's see, they decrease it late game a little bit, so it actually still starts at the same amount for 300, but then it starts decreasing as we go along. At level six, it's 10, it used to be 1050, now it's 925, and it used to be a one to one AP scale ratio, and now it's 0.9 AP scale ratio. So it's <clears throat> so the, the the shield is slightly less powerful. Now I don't think the shield was really one of the best parts about him, so I'm not too worried about that. They also reduced the mana cost of Fire Crash, which is really good because used to I spam the hell out of Fire Crash, and it used to cost me crazy amounts of mana. So it's gone from 50 at level one to 40. It's uh, actually gone down 10 per level, looks like. Uh, his base HP, so his base health has increased from 3093 to 3205. So that's a nice uh, 112 upgrade on the health to start off. And his base armor has increased from 8793. So he's a lot. It got a lot, a lot of tank here. I mean, 112 health and, and six armor is nothing to really bat your eyes at. That's something early game, especially early early on when getting you know 
one of those level two ganks from a high AD hero will, you know, definitely be a little bit less effective. Damage taken by marked targets from Holy Embers decreased. So Holy Embers being the ultimate member that does true damage, it went from one eight hundred. Say the same. So at level one, to say the same. It decreased at level two from ten fifty to a thousand, and from thirteen hundred to twelve hundred. And the AP ratio went from one point one to one. So it's a little bit of a decrease in the true damage done from the ultimate. All in all, <clears throat> some buffs, some nerfs. Really just trying to like, um, you know, I think balance them a little bit. I think overall yeah. this is really not much of anything. I would say it's a buff of maybe a three because he also has nerfs mixed in. So it's not like, a, maybe, maybe, let's say a four. He is getting a good HP boost early game and a good base armor increase. So Yeah, when you said three, the first thing that came to mind for me was about a four. I thought it was a little more influential. I don't think it's quite a five because there there is a balance of buffs and nerfs going on and the the thing is ignis has always largely been regarded as one of the weakest heroes uh one of, especially one of the weakest casters uh they had to give him true damage from magic damage in one of the patches recently trying to buff him up a little bit so i'm liking that they're giving him a lot of attention and trying to make him more relevant especially in the early game where he was uh failing and lastly the uh, i'll say that uh the reduced mana cost on that poke that's already on a three second cooldown before any reductions is huge because you can go out of mana really fast with his boat. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so the next guy up is going to be Raz. Um, all right, so Raz is passive. Fancy Footwork is the one that got changed. So Fancy Footwork change from th uh, every third normal attack causes extra magic damage and a knockback to every three normal attacks. The first normal attack causes extra magic damage and a knockback and the, and the extra magic damage is decreased from 100 plus 7 per level plus 1.0 ap ratio to 100 plus 5 per level plus 0.7 so it was actually a pretty big nerf to the damage but does he do it more often now it, it is a buff you Are don't you have to wait for that third attack to get the extra damage and the knockback so that is a buff. Okay. So he's going to be able to do his passive fancy footwork more often. So even though the damage is reduced a little bit, he'll be able to do it more frequently. It's really oddly worded to me. Okay, so let me explain real fast. So the way it is right now, like you know, before the patch, his passive required you doing three normal attacks to then trigger the extra damage and the knockup, the knockback. Uh, and now you get it right away. The first normal attack causes the extra damage and the knockback, so you can lead in with it by uh, getting oh, extra okay. damage and knockback right on the first one, and then it'll be every three after that. That's not bad. So, okay. so you go out of combat, you come back in, and you're you're ready to go to to a. He, he'll, it'll make him a better it's, initiator. It's, it's, it's better, but, a better it, but at the same time, it, it's less damage on that extra magic damage though. So so, so they're balancing. It, a it's a bit of a balancing effect. They're making him. More I really like that he can assassin. lead in with a knockback. Well, That's it's huge. not just a knockback. It's extra damage on an auto attack. Plus, it is a it's a it's a dive of sorts it's 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 a, it moves it, it it gets him closer to the target it does so yeah overall i mean being able to lead in with that now is actually pretty solid um <clears throat> so i'm definitely going to it, it kind of definitely changes the way he gets played it puts a little more emphasis on his passive fancy footwork than it does on his second ability um power surge so if you're playing Raz, it gives you the ability to play more of an, an assassin style gameplay where you're going to be initiating with an auto attack, uh, not necessarily just a regular. Um, now, you're still going to initiate with Power Surge, and then, but you're going to be able to close the distance a lot easier. Um, so, before you would hit Power Surge, hit somebody, and then you'd want to hit your uppercut or your ultimate to close the gap and then get in. Now, you can, you, your first auto attack is going to dive in there and get you close in to be able to then. You be closer, be more, um, be more likely to hit your your uppercut and your ultimate to, to push him around the way you need to. So I think overall, it assists in Raz's ability to get closer faster. <clears throat> if you're playing against Raz, um, what you're going to get is a guy who can close the gap a lot more frequently and a lot faster. So 
Something to be careful of. He already gets a movement speed buff, like a small movement speed buff after a power surge. Um, the, it reduces your ability. He kind of he kind of dashes a little bit after power surge too. So he is, um, yeah. So Raz is even more of an up in your face guy now. He's going to be able to close the gap and get right up in there a lot easier than he used to. So um, on a scale of one to ten, I say it's probably a four. It, it helps him be more of an assassin for people who used to like to just sit back and you know, throw out his power surge and try to whittle people down. It's a little bit less effective for you. This this buff is, but I think for people who want to play him as a true assassin, and which I prefer playing him that way, I think it's a I think it's a pretty good buff. Yeah, um, this was actually one I'm gonna disagree with you on, and I'll, but I'll explain myself. I think this is a seven or an eight, and I don't say that for a Raz main. Raz mains, this is probably very much almost a nerf in some regards, uh, or or you know a change. But for people that don't play Raz like me, that are wanting to learn him and he feels clunky, it, the old fancy footwork, uh, it moved him closer to the enemies on his second and third consecutive normal attacks. And the third one would then do the knockback and stun. And the character almost sort of auto moving itself is very awkward if you're not used to playing it. it it's a weird play style to learn and everything. With the new fancy footwork, his he gets... After using an ability, his, his movement speed is increased. It doesn't, like, move him position, you know, it doesn't change his position around like it did before. And his first normal attack gives you that automatic knockback to the target. To me, this makes him a more normal, easy-to-learn hero like so many other warriors or assassins. Uh, and you don't have that awkward moving you closer just because you're hitting a button that makes kind of Raz a strange hero to learn. So for me, I think it's a big change if you're not a Raz main, if you're trying to get in the door and learn Raz. <clears throat> After reading the the description of the ability in-game, it makes more sense to me now. Agreed, um, agreed. So his first normal attack deals additional damage and knocks the target back. So if you guys remember on Raz before, the third attack used to be the one that uh, did the knockback and the extra damage. Um, now you're going to be able to start a fight with the knockback. I mean, it's going to really open up the door for... You know, Raz is the the uh, the Cho, if you will, uh, from Mobile Legends of Arena Valor, yes. where he can now, he's really effective now in starting what I like to call the CC Train of Death, where he can crowd control you from the first basic attack, auto attack, to the uppercut, to the ult. He can get you crowd controlled without mercy for a while now. Um, so I am actually going to, now that I am, I, I'm getting a better understanding of how it works, it's really really oddly worded for me and I was getting a little confused to exactly how it would look now I have a better idea of it and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's it's more of a six or a seven yeah okay I was I was confused about the exact details of it I, this, this changed to, to his passive the way that before it kind of moved you around the way it worked and yes. now you get movement speed with each ability you use to me this makes him a hero I actually want to learn now well now the, it was the, awkward to play him before. the combo I talked about power surge auto attack is more effective now the power surge is a massive slow 60% then you you get to do the knockback uppercut and ultimate I mean w w when you get that master down they won't be able to slowed autoed I mean you're gonna be able to do it without them even being able to get out of it and you're getting movement speed every time you hit one of those abilities. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to stay next to them if they do try to move or run or dash or anything. Yeah, definitely. He, he, will, he will stay on them, and that's big for an All assassin. right, next we got a mage who's not really a mage. He's a support. Alistair. <clears throat> Alistair, the magic damage dealt by each shock from Matrix of Woe, which is his second ability, which is the big kind of octagon shape. Um, is it an octagon? I think it is an octagon. No, it's a sectagon. Um, sextagon? Is that the word? Uh, you're a sextagon. Your mom's a sextagon. <laughs> your mom sent me a sextagon earlier. Um, <laughs> <You're shit. laughs> okay, so Matrix of Will, they increase the damage from 100 starting to 115. And then at level 6, 175 to 190, they decrease the AP scaling ratio from 0.4 to 0.38. Um, <clears throat> it, all it's going to do really is help him clear lanes faster early game. It's not really a massive buff of any kind. It's going to give him a little bit better ability to clear lanes. They're trying to make him more of a mid laner. Folks, don't play him mid lane. He's a support. Build him as a half tank or really an off tank support. 
um, where he can, he's beefy, he can stay alive, but he's able to uh, get 40% cooldown reduction and just throw his incredible crowd control abilities out as often as he feels uh, necessary. So if you're playing as Alistair, uh, you're gonna be a little, bit, do a little bit more damage. If you're playing against him, you can be able to do a little, little bit more damage. That's pretty much all there is to this one. It's a really small one. On a scale of one to 10, it's a one. It's a really small change. <clears throat> Yeah, I have to agree. This is this is just it's so minor. I mean, I, I know they felt the need to balance everybody, but this was almost like why bother. But you know, whatever. It, 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 it changed the change, and uh, maybe they felt it was necessary. And the last thing I'll say about Alistair, it's six sided. I just checked on it, so that would make it a hexagon. Hexagon? What the hell's a sextagon? <laughs> that a, is that a real thing? It isn't, is it? <laughs> that must have been what your mom was telling me earlier. Then okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Alright, next we're moving on to our first non-mage, and it's going to be our newest hero to uh, NA and LA, and that's Superman. So they increase the cooldown of Superman of his ability Man of Steel, which is his second ability, which is the one that breaks crowd control from 12 to 14 seconds, and they increase the cooldown of Speeding Bullet, which is his ultimate, from 60 at level 1 to 70 from 55 to 60 and they left it at 50 even at the end so that's the same as it used to be so um it seems like they're just nerfing him a little bit early game um obviously superman was one of the most popular players in the european server and he's going to be in na this nerf is hopefully a you know trying to <clears throat> take him out of his element a little bit giving him less ability to be able to break crowd control off and do his ultimate which makes him pretty much invincible so uh, what it does to Superman players is it makes you a little bit less, a little bit more vulnerable. <clears throat> what it does if you're playing against him is it opens up the door just a tad against him to where he's going to be able to ult less against your early game and he's going to be able to break free of crowd control because that's really the only way to kill him, um, you know, throughout the whole game. So, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how big is the nerf? I'd say probably a, th a 2 or a 3. Yeah. I agree. I'd agree. Just small cooldown um, increases. They're not going to be a huge difference. It's not enough to really kill him. <clears throat> Alright, next up, we have our first marksman, and it's a popular one. It's Violet! Alright, guys, this is a big, interesting change, and <clears throat> they nerfed Violet's first ability, or her passive, rather, a, a, a while back, and it didn't have the impact they were intending um, because... The, it, 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 Violet was getting picked pretty much every single game it seemed like so it wanted to increase the games that she was getting picked in and, and, and make her less popular so they reduced the cooldown of her passive <clears throat> her passive reads like this they used to read normal attacks reduce tactical fires cooldown by one second when hitting it, anything then they reduced it to normal attacks reduce tactical fires cooldown by one second when hitting an enemy hero and half a second when hitting a minion or jungle monster. Then now they've reduced it to normal attacks reduce tactical fires cooldown by half a second when hitting an enemy hero. So you don't get any cooldown reduction from, from her best ability, her main ability, when you're hitting minions or jungle monsters. Now it's only when you're hitting um, heroes and at that they reduced it from one second to 0.5 seconds. So it's a pretty substantial nerf. It makes her even worse in the jungle than she already was, <clears throat> but it also affects her laning ability. I mean, she's going to be able to cast her first ability a lot less frequently in lane, um, which definitely affects her clear time. It affects how often she can poke. So I'd say this is a pretty substantial nerf. So what it does to Violet, it really reduces the amount of poke damage that Violet can output because she's not going to be she's not going to be able to do it nearly as frequently. What it does if you're playing against Violet is it really opens up more doors to be able to attack her while her tactical fires on cooldown. Uh, so on a scale of 1 to 10, how big of a nerf is it? I think it's probably a 7. Maybe 7.5. Yeah, I was actually going to go about that same range. I was going to do fairly high because... Copy uh, You know, the, the thing about Violet, and, and I think everybody would just agree, tactical fire is her thing. Like, that's what makes her shine. And so doing that less often, especially I've been in a lot of situations where I'm the support with a marksman and she feels like she's rolling all the time and just nailing me down with huge crits as I'm trying to support for my marksman. Or occasionally I'll be a melee person in top lane and a violet will show up and she's nailing all the minions down, rolling and just hitting me and keeping me under tower constantly. So anything to keep her from being able to use that roll ability so frequently is a welcome change for me. 
Yep, so Violet is getting a pretty large nerf that will affect her significantly in lane and in the jungle. <clears throat> okay, next is my favorite hero in all of the game, and that is going to be Yorn. Yorn is getting a nerf. The additional magic damage dealt by Heartshot, which is his ultimate, um, is equal to 10% of the target's lost HP. It now has a maximum 1,000 damage dealt to monsters. What this used to be is Yorn used to be able to really easily snipe dragons and uh, big boys, Dark Slayers, if he ulted near there <clears throat> before, like when they were low on health, he used to be able to hit them for just a crap ton of health. And now it's maxed out at a thousand, so he can't hit them for like just it's just a crazy amount. Um, so that's all that is. It's no big deal. How does it affect your orange? You're not gonna be able to steal, you know, dragon and, and dark slayer as easily. How does it affect people playing against Yorn? You have to worry less about Yorn stealing the big buffs. Um, on a scale of one to ten, it's a it's a three, two. two. Yeah, two. Yeah, <clears throat> nothing big. Um, okay. it's niche. It's niche. It was one little thing that they said was kind of getting out of control. All right, now we're moving on to our first assassin. It's gonna be Cricknack. Oh, wait, hold <clears> on, <throat> you missed one. No, I didn't. Yeah. Who? Oh, wait, no. They just... What? They didn't buff Warren nerf Valheim? Are they really saying he's perfect the way he is? Uh, Valheim is incredible. <laughs> That's why he's played in every game. Yeah. He <clears throat> didn't get a buff or a nerf. He's apparently just perfect. That's wonderful. All right. Cricknack. The Scarabim. Magic damage as fixed proportion of max HP by terrifying plague. Rescaled from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13% at each level to a flat 10% all the time. So that is Terrifying Plague's the first ability. Um, this, the bottom part of it says when Krikadek attacks marked enemies, so he marks them with the uh, the Plague of Larvae, then he attacks them, they take 10% of maximum HP. It used to be starting at 8 level 1, ending at 13, so it's a buff and a nerf, makes them better early game, it affects them, it makes them less do less damage late game. Overall, I think... Um, it's a good thing. I think overall, having a better early game. He's already a great early game ganker, and he's just more powerful now. So I think it's a little bit of a, of a, of a buff, personally. I think it's probably just a flat. I mean, overall, it's going to hurt him a little bit, I guess. It's it's kind of a nerf. It's kind of, kind of both. So <clears throat> Hornrust HP rega regens rescaled from 100 at level 1 and 475 at level 6, plus 0.380 scaling to 150 at level 1 and 400. So it's more powerful early. And it's less powerful late. So they've nerfed his late game twice and buffed his early game twice. And the scaling is also less, 0.3 to 0.2. <clears throat> um, that is his second ability, Horn Rush. Physical damage caused by Drone Drop, which is his ultimate, has been changed. They have nerfed it across the board from 4, 4 6, 800, 1, 2, and 3, plus 1.6 scaling to 350, 500, 650, and 1.5 scaling. So that's a massive nerf all around. Terrifying play can now be used while flying in drone drop. Now that's pretty dope. Yep. I do enjoy that a lot. You used to not be able to do any kind of attacks while you were flying in his ultimate state. So now you can do the terrifying plague. You can drop in on drone drop and make the the mark go off. Really doing a much stronger initiate damage, even though they've reduced the damage. So I do like that. <clears throat> the landing speed of drone drop has been increased. So he's now going to be able to do. Which was, it was a problem. Drone, um, the landing of drone drop took a pretty fair amount of time before, and you could be attacked the whole time you were doing it. So it was kind of, um, kind of messed up. So their ideas on it is that he just hasn't getting getting picked very recently. Um, they think it's gonna make make him a more explosive overall hero. I think I agree. I think um, upping the the regen early that you get from, uh, or sorry, upping the uh, the early game damage or the HP region you get from Horn Rush, and uh, having the ability to cast Terrifying Plague while you're flying around is actually pretty bossy, and I actually can't, I'm actually really excited to do that. I mean, it gives you a really disgusting opening set of abilities. Instead of having to drop, do Terrifying uh, Plague, and then do the Horn Rush to do attack, now you can kind of do them all significantly faster. So I do like that. Overall, if you're playing Cricknack, you're going to be a lot stronger early game. You're going to be weaker late game, uh, but you're going to be more versatile in how you engage an encounter, which is a good thing. Overall, I think it's a buff. Uh, and if you're playing against Cricknack, Cricknack is going to be even more deadly early game. 
He's going to be less powerful late game, and you definitely want to watch out for flying Cricknax because if he can affect, if he can cast Terrifying Plague now while he's flying, and then drill you with it, we're talking about a guy who can now do half your health or most of your health and damage before you even really realize he's flown near you. So um, he definitely got a little more terrifying in that in that sense. So I'm gonna say it's a buff. I'm gonna say it's a buff of uh, five. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I, I think that. It's kind of a scale type thing. They 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 took some, they gave some, so overall it kind of even stevened out uh, by buffing some areas of his game and nerfing others. But overall, I, th I I'm really interested to see how he's going to play out. I know you play a really nasty Cricknack. I've seen it. Yeah, uh, I'm interested to try him out too. So next on the list is Astrid. I swear we're making progress. It's just going. It's just taking time. A lot of heroes being changed. So Astrid is getting changed. A lot of stuff. Let's start up at number one. Remove the damage caused to enemies when Bladed Guardian Shield is in effect. So her passive, Bladed Guardian, used to pump up with a shield, and they used to take a little bit of damage when they attacked her. That's gone. Bladed Guardian Shield HP is reduced from 450 plus hero level times 75. What? That's confusing as balls, Scott. Um, I agree. Two, 150 plus okay it was confusing before it's now less it's now one it's, it's 150 it's, it's... plus 1.580 scaling yeah so it's a lot more simple but it is less of a shield apparently spin slash damage rescaled from 160 to start 360 at level 6 0.680 scaling to 150 to start which is 10 less um, and then it gets to being more by the end to 400 and then has 1.180 skin, so she just got a crap ton of damage on her first ability more, a lot. That, I'd just say practically across the board. Across the board, she got a yeah, absolutely. She got a massive increase in damage in her spin slash. So she has she's less tanky, more damagey. Removed the 50% slow effect from Diablo, which was her uh, well, her ultimate. So her ultimate no longer slows. Uh, removed the dire blow mechanic that increased Astrid's total damage as her HP decreased. So it used to say the less damage she had, the more damage it used to do, right? Uh, yeah, you're talking about on her ultimate, right? Yeah. Yeah, her ultimate used to word, uh, she would power up and become immune to all damage for two seconds. After a second and a half, she'd swung her sword, dealing damage. For every 2% of her max HP she had lost, she deals 1% okay, so more that's damage. Gone. That's gone. That's gone. Yeah. Now, whenever Diablo hits a target with more HP than herself, she will inflict a one second daze, which I'm assuming is some kind of hard crowd control. Whenever Diablo hits a target with e HP equal to or lower than herself, she will inflict true damage equal to 16% of the target's lost HP, which is a freaking metric ton. True um, damage. 16% true damage of their lost HP. So, I mean, if they're freaking low, that's going to finish them off. Base physical damage of Dire Blow rescaled from 500, 750, and 1,000 in a 1 1.2 scaling to 4, 600, 800, but a 280 scaling. So, really, they're saying we didn't want Astrid to be a tanky hero. We wanted her to be able to deal balls to the wall damage. Yes, which this did. She is going to become a much more uh, AD friendly damaging hero so this is really these are nerfs across the board um she's she's just more it's just different she's more damaging now so if you're playing as astrid you're going to want to do a completely new build you're going to want to play a completely new style because you're now doing damage a lot more than you are being tanky now your, your ultimate still keeps you immune to damage for two freaking seconds so or one and a half seconds so not two seconds that's, that's ridiculous um yes so I'm actually interested in Astrid right now. <clears throat> a lot. I would venture to say that she's a more viable jungler now than she's ever been. So, <clears throat> I'm interested to take her in the jungle with the new Soul Reaver item. I think that's going to be pretty interesting. So, if you're playing as Astrid, you're going to be a whole new a whole new game style, really, for her. If you're playing against her, watch out, man. You're used to her being tankier, a little harder to kill, but she doesn't really do crazy amounts of damage. Yeah, that's not the same Astrid anymore. So watch out for Astrid. On a scale of 1 to 10, I see this is about a 7.5 buff. 
Yeah, uh, you me, accidentally said nerf uh, earlier, but yeah, oh, it's a buff. It, it's let a me give buff. it a let me give it a context to why it's seven and a half. Okay, so um, Astrid isn't a great tank. It's not really the way her kit is built. Um, she's not a great tank as it is. So now you can build her a little bit more damagey, and she's gonna be able to output, be able to output a lot more damage. So I feel like the, what the changes they've made really make her kit make more sense to who she is as a player as a hero. Um, and I think she's going to be much better at doing lots of damage than she's going to be at having been a tanky hero before. So I say it's a big buff because it makes her, um, I think it makes her more viable. Yes. I, I, I think this is one of the biggest reworks of all the mm -hmm. heroes in this patch. For sure. For sure. What's your number? Oh, um, yeah, seven, eight. Somewhere in there. It's definitely on the high end scale. I'm very interested to see her now, at, whereas before I had very little interest in her. Okay, next is going going to Marksman. We are going to go to Fennec. Fennec, damaged up by Chain Hammer Cyclone, can stack Thieves Mark. So, Thieves Mark is the stack, his first ability that stacks four times and explodes. Now, the damage from his ultimate chain hammer cycler, which deals damage every 0.5 seconds, will actually create this, will help the stacks out, which is actually a pretty big buff, in my opinion, a very big buff. Um, they also fixed the bug that caused Fennec to switch between two move actions while moving inside the altar. I have no idea what that means. <coughs> um, it's a bug fix. So it's a bug fix, quality of life stuff. They wanted to increase the trigger rate of his uh, Thieves Mark, which is understandable. So. I'm actually going to say this is a, if you're playing Ass Fennec, this is a solid buff for you. Early game, mid game, late game, it's a solid buff all around. Going to be able to get you that, I mean, the Thieves Mark explosion is a really big deal. So, I'm going to say it is a buff. And if you're playing against them, man, now I'm definitely telling you guys stay out of that ultimate. The ultimate wasn't that horrible before. It was good, but not like it would wreck your face. Now, if you have Thieves Mark and the ultimate going off on you, you're going to be melting. And then you're going to explode. And then it's going to be awful. So... Watch out for that. On a scale of 1 to 10, I say this buff is about a, let's say a 5. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's about a 5, but it's a big deal for him. Uh, right. The, the ultimate could be largely, re, you know, dismissed uh, by many heroes in the game, and I think every hero now is going to have to be getting out of it. Correct. All right, moving on to our next hero, we are headed back to the warrior section where we're going to talk about my good friend Ryoma. Raid, what do they do to Ryoma? They reduce the physical damage of Wailing Blade, which is his second ability, from 330 to start and 555 to end to 320 and 520. And they change the AD scaling from 2.12 to 2. Not a massive nerf, but it's a nerf. I think the issue is that that is the ability that gets a stun off also. It's his stunning ability when it's done at max range. And I think it just, it hits so hard for an ability that costs hard crowd control also. I think this is a good ballot change. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a nerf, but it's almost like mm. a necessary nerf. It was such a hard hitting ability uh, with a, a crowd control attached that the knee can follow it in. And it, it just, it always made it, it seem very strong when you get hit by this one ability. Right. Um, if, if you're playing as Ryoma, it doesn't really change anything the way you play Ryoma. You just could do a little bit less damage with this ability. It's not the end of the world. Playing against him, it isn't really going to help you against Ryoma because if he stuns you, he can still jump in and do a slew of abilities on you to kill you. It's just a small balance change. On a scale of 1 to 10, how big is the nerf? I'd say a 2.5 to 3. It's not really anything super substantial, but it definitely is a little bit of a balance. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to go with a 1. I'm going to say you won't even really notice. Because if he hits <coughs> you're you with right. it, you're stunned, you're stunned anyway, and then he's just going to jump in you. I mean, you're talking at level five. You're talking about a pretty minuscule amount. I feel like it's uh, thirty at level damage, six. It's thirty-five damage. And I mean, yeah, you're talking about maybe fifty damage less. It's nothing to be crazy. Go crazy. If you're getting hit by it, you're stunned <clears> anyway. <throat> so all right. Issue. Next up is another warrior. We're going with Scud. Okay, so the charging, the the scaling of. Let me restart this whole sentence. Furious Charge, his second first ability. Um, is getting a new cooldown rescale from six seconds to starting at seven now, going all the way down to five point five. So the, it's gonna be longer at the beginning and it's gonna be shorter at the end a little bit. Nothing crazy. New when Power Glove is used, his second ability, 
<clears throat> the next normal attack will gain 12% increased bonus damage every 0.5 seconds, up to a maximum of 60% after 5 seconds of charging. That's just a flat buff. Yeah. So <clears throat> that used to not be there at all. So okay. So here, here's the old old tool tip for power glove. Scud infuses uh, blood into his glove, increasing attack speed twenty percent and movement speed ten percent for five seconds. Interesting. Then the next normal attack would reduce their movement speed. Uh, but yeah, so he used to get the attack speed twenty percent and movement speed ten percent mm. for the five <clears throat> seconds. So they're increasing That's the damage on the next normal attack by up to 60% if you happen to take time. So if you're like roaming to another lane, you wanna hit it in advance before you get there, you could do an extra 60% damage with that thing. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. But it also can't critically strike. Not that Scud was a crit guy anyways, but. It's, it's, it's for the Scuds that can hide in the bushes and yeah. can charge it up and come out and sock somebody for a ridiculous amount of damage to ambush them. I think that's what they're going for. It is extra damage, even if it's just for one second. It's 12% extra damage. If it's five seconds, no, no, if it's, if it's one second, it's 24% extra damage. So it's extra damage regardless. Yeah. So yeah, it's it a buff. Is. It's just the longer you do it, the bigger it's gonna be. Overall, if you're playing Ascud, it isn't gonna change a lot about what you do. Power Glove is definitely gonna be something you're gonna wanna use more often and maybe use more strategically because the more damage that thing does, the more powerful you'll be with Scud. Um, if you're playing against Scud, watch out if this guy's charging up his glove, man. 60% extra damage is a pretty good amount. So, uh, scale of 1 to 10, the buff, I will say, a 3 or 4. Yeah, I'll go with a 4. I don't think it's world changing, but it's something. All right. And he is getting a little bit of a nerf on his first ability. Just slightly. I don't know how many we have left, but we're almost done, guys. Um, okay. Next is another warrior. Kilgroff. Kilgroff skin some major changes. Um, <clears throat> attack speed increase per normal attack from the Fanatic, which is his passive, um, from four percent to six to ten, four to eight to six to ten. So it's based on level how much it does. Um, so it's going to increase his, instead of increasing like at level one, instead of increasing his auto attacks every time you do one at four percent, it's going to increase it at six percent, and then at max level it's going to be ten instead of eight. Max stacks have been reduced from eight to five. Now I actually think this is a massive buff because the hardest thing with Kilgroth, he when he's at max stacks of of his attack speed from his passive, he's really really good. But getting to eight stacks, doing eight auto attacks with him took a while. So now five yeah. is much more manageable. So now it's fifty percent instead of what used to be what, Cal. Oh, eight by eight, sixty-four. Six, sixty-four. So it's fourteen percent of stack so speed, you but you get there a lot faster. A lot so. Of time you could. Right, I think I think overall it's a much much uh, it's a good buff. I think extra yeah. damage, extra extra magic damage every third normal attack from enraged spear increases. So <clears throat> enraged spear is his second ability, which it it used to be. Uh, he used to get e extra magic damage every third normal attack. Um, was it 25, 50, 75, 100, 150 plus 0. 0.2580 scaling? Now it's uh, starting at 60 from 25 and ending at 235 from 150. So it's really gone up substantially. Uh, and then it scales at 0.380. So that enraged spear, it's really a, it's, it's like not a passive ability is what it is. Yeah. So that's actually really solid, guys. He's going to be able to do a lot more damage now. Um, and I will say the end game reads differently than, the, than that this does. The end game says, so this says 0.380 scaling. The end game says attack damage times 0 0.04 or 0 0.4. So this is 0.3 on the patch notes. It's actually 0.4, which is 10% more. It's actually really good. So yeah. I'm in, I'm actually, I'm actually excited to try him again. He's getting some nice buffs. Next, HP healed per target by Enraged Spear. So Enraged Spear heals people also. So when you hit the ability, every normal attack in the next four seconds steals additional magic damage. And for each target he hits, he gains health. The amount is multiplied by one and a half if the target is an enemy hero. So, um, and they're doubling it. They're doubling it. That was more, doubling. more than doubling it in some cases. So it's starting at 20. It used to start at 20, now it starts at 45. And it ends, it used to end at 45, and now it ends at 100. So they're more than doubling it, plus they're doubling the 
AD ratio from 0.1 to 2. So this he's hitting a big buff. Big deal. Yeah. Next, if an enemy hero is hit by Enraged Spear, the HP restore is boosted by 150%. That was this. Oh, it used to not be boosted at all. Right. So now the, he gets he gets more health if he hits him here. So now you're talking about it's getting pretty crazy. His life steals better. At, his attack speed better. His damage is better. Uh, the reduced the mana cost of Rage Spear from 70 to 50 at level 1 and from 95 to 75 at level 6. And then they reduced the cooldown from 14 and a half at level 1 to 12 at level 6 to just a flat 12. So, man, Kilgroth, looking good. Fanatic stacks added by Gore increased from 4 to 5. So, when you say this ultimate, he used to gain 4 stacks of Fanatic, which is the passive, which used to be half of the total stacks. Now he gains 5 which is the full stacks. So when you hit his ultimate, he used to go, he used to get an immediate 32% attack speed, right, Cal? And then yeah. now when you hit his ultimate, he's gonna gain an immediate 50% attack speed, which is a much better number, obviously. It removes all crack control effects for the four, next four seconds still. So, um, okay, so this is a this is a crazy thing too. Kilgroth is immune to crack control effects for four seconds after activating his ultimate. Now, the effect can be extended by 0 0.03 seconds per hit on an enemy hero up to a maximum of three seconds. So you can actually be immune to crowd control effects now for a total of seven seconds, um, <clears throat> which is nasty. So it, his old Gore Lord Ultimate said he removed all control effects for the next six seconds. Okay, so... so so they nerfed it a little, but you can extend it to well, make when you, it when you have about the same fifty percent attack speed increase. Pretty close. So. You're going to be able to get that thing up to seven seconds. So right, and before it, it was just a flat six seconds. So so as long as you're extending it, you actually get and it. You longer should be now. so okay. So it's still yeah. overall a buff. I feel like because if you're gonna, if you're getting as old, you're in it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So what they tried to do really, I think, is Kilgroth's main abilities, you know, he put on Fafnir's, he'd be able to do it, you know, damage to percent health, which was good against tanks, but not really effective against squishies, which is normally what you do with a warrior. You attack the squishies. They've now given him a lot more base damage, which is gonna make him hit squishies even harder. Um, so now he's really just better against everyone. Yeah, um, and since he's in the thick of things, hitting that ult, he's restoring a bunch more health than he did before. He can stay in there. He no longer has to feel like he has to get out all the time if he you know, starts taking some damage. Yeah, I think that they... Yeah, I, I love it. I, I think if you're playing as Kilgroth, it gives you a ton of damage boost. It makes you be able to do a lot more healing to yourself. Um, I mean, all the round. It, it gets you to your max Kilgroth attack speed a lot faster. I think all around it was a massive buff. Uh, if you're playing against Kilgroth, man, he's much more than just kind of a nuisance now. He's actually like a deadly nuisance. Like before yes. he was like a mosquito that hung around, had some pretty good attack, but you could burst him down. Now he's more like, you know, like a malaria carrying, you know, mosquito. Like he could actually Seven kill you. seconds of not being able to be crowd controlled during his ult. With a massive increase in attack speed. Yes. And, and I'd like to point out the new item that gives you 50% attack speed, the new jungle item. So now yeah. you add, I mean, the max attack speed, guys, is 200%. So now he gets 50% from his ultimate immediately. He gets 50% from the first jungle item. So literally at like level six, when he finishes the first jungle item, he'll be able to already have an increase of 100% attack speed at level six. So uh, good That's luck with that. Great. He's going to be a yeah. monster in the jungle now. I'm actually really excited to get... You guys know I love me some Kilgroth. I haven't played him in a while because he was really pretty weak. Now I'm thinking he's going to be pretty strong. So um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 10. They've really buffed the hell out of him. And I'm going to... Uh, I hate to give it a things. 10, oh. but that's no, hard. That's fine. To. Two, that's how you feel, though. Uh, two things. I Earlier, just a little bit ago, I said Astrid had some of the biggest changes. I, Kilgroth just took it. Kilgroth has the biggest changes. Biggest changes. <clears throat> yeah, she, she's second place now. Uh, and I'm going to give it a 9. And the only reason I took a point off is maybe a 9.5 is because a really good Kilgroth right now can get to that 65 or 64% 
and now they're capping you at 50%. Well, that's the only thing. That's the tiniest bit of a nerf. I'll, I'll say it's about 0. 0.5. The one thing I'll say about that for experienced, already awesome Kilgroth mm -hmm. mains is it's a tiny nerf in that one little department. The one thing I'll say about that though is I believe what you're not taking into account is how it balances out. So um, even though the cap is 50, the extra damage you'll do between attack one and five that you used to be able to do between attack one and five before went up yeah. um went up substantially so what you get in that early part of going bananas with him is so much higher than what you had before i think it makes up for the fact that the total cap is less honestly that is I, true. I do so yeah <clears throat> yeah it's a the, massive the buff that we both agree. faster and everything yeah. um all right next up is another warrior slash assassin ari they added uh, so for some reason they've added 50 uh magic resistance to her early game i don't know if that's a normal thing that people would normally have but she now starts with 50 magic defense she used to have zero i mean like let's see wukong has 50. I, I think for some reason she didn't have any and now she does so yeah, I, th I think it's a case of they forgot to give her some or something because so almost everybody i've ever looked at has a base 50. okay so that's that um it's gonna make her stronger early game. It's, she's gonna be stronger against mages if you're playing against her, and it's a buff of a, like a two. Nothing crazy, maybe one. Um, <clears throat> next is, going back to the marksman, we're going to Slims. Slims is getting um, a buff. Uh, okay, so Flying Spear. Attack speed increased upon hit. So that is his first ability, the, the long stun. It used to, whoops. Um, <clears throat> all right, it used to buff the attack speed uh, starting at 25% to 50. Oh, it's a nerf. It's a nerf. It used to start at 25%, and then at level 6, it was at 50%. Now it starts at 20, and it ends at 40%. So it's actually a pretty decent nerf to that. Normal attacks are now reinforced at the start and end of Savage Potion. Um, so Savage Potion. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, Cal? What did it used to read like? Oh, um, let me pull him up. <clears throat> okay, so Slims, we are looking at, uh, let's see, Savage Potion says, Slims activates his instincts and enhances his normal attacks to deal additional damage equal to 4% of the target's max HP. His movement speed is increased by 20%, and each kill extends it by 3 seconds, is what he used to say. That's still what it says now. I don't know what the change is. It says normal well, it says, attacks it says are now normal reinforced. attacks are now reinforced at the start and end of it. Oh, I see. <clears throat> so, the first attack of Savage Potion used to not do the extra four percent target max HP, and the last one didn't also. So now those do also. So that's a little better. So it's just more of a fix to an issue that used to. It's more of a bug fix, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So that that I mean two that's eight percent more damage, so it's kind of a buff. But he's getting a slight nerf. So I was gonna say if you're playing as Slims, um, not a whole lot's changed. If we're being honest, it's played in the same way. If you're playing against him, not a whole lot's changed. I'd say it's an even kill zero zero flat nerf buff deal. <clears throat> yeah, just some really balanced changes. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Next we have another marksman, Lindis. This is a simple one. They fixed a the bug that caused passive on Pierce Gates to, trigger, to tr trigger when she made two normal attacks in quick session. So this is a little bit of a nerf. It's just a bug fix where she she used to be able to trigger her her passive twice. Now she can't. So nothing crazy. Uh, I think I think she got a little bit more of a nerf than that mm -hmm. from our first video. When now when she dives into bushes, she stays exposed briefly. Correct. It does because Lindis's were notorious for that going in and out of the bush to get her passive. All right, guys. Now we're getting some of the smaller quick changes. So uh, Liliana is getting a change. She's a mage. Just go to the mage section. Where's Liliana? There she is. <clears throat> Human form magic damage reduced from 500 at first to 900. Oh, they just reduced the AP scaling from 0.9 to yep. 0.8. So just a small, tiny bit of a nerf to her magic, her human form magic damage. Um, triple combo action time in Fox form reduced from 0.9 to 0.6. Now that is her, um, let's see, which one is that one? 
I think that is her, uh, it says triple combo, actually. I think that's her first ability, um, which is Foxtrot, and she would do the triple attack. I think it goes off faster now, which is actually a pretty big buff to me. With, especially with the Liliana build that we have on our How to Build Liliana video. Um, to resolve this... Okay, to resolve the issue where Liliana would be immune during Unpredictable's movement, causing it to enter cooldown without a transformation, talents are no longer able to use, to be used during Unpredictable's movement. So, um, Unpredictable's your ultimate. Fox form to human form transformation, ability power bonus reduced. Um, at, at, at level 1, it's the same, and it's 200 to 160 and 320 to 240, so pretty... Um, <clears throat> when you go back to human form, your bonus ability power for what the next two sec, two and a half seconds is reduced a little bit. Um, then unpredictable cooldown raised from seven to eight seconds. So the old, so it's, it's it's a pretty solid nerf all around. I feel like one kind of thing that makes it a buff is the uh, triple combo um, is reduced from 0 0.9 to 0 0.6. So overall nerf, if you're playing as Liliana. <clears throat> um, this could be a little bit more. You're gonna be able to do a little bit less damage uh, in human form than you were before. If playing against her, she could be a little bit less damage in human form. It it, it, it buffs um, the fox forms a tad, I think. So they leveled out her human form damage and upped her fox form damage a little bit. So cool, cool. Next is a change to one of my all-time favorite heroes, my favorite marksman, Morin, and it's a buff, folks. The max stacks of precision, which is his first ability, or his uh, passive rather. Um, so every successful attack and ability places a mark of precision at Morn. At five stacks, the cooldown for tactical maneuver is refreshed immediately, and Morn gains um, some increased life steal. So the max stacks of precision. I actually think it means the max stacks of tactical maneuver. So he stacks. Yeah, there's a, it's incorrectly worded. So <clears throat> the max stacks of. Um, Tactical Maneuver used to be seven times of gaining armor and magic defense. Um, now it's eight times. So it's, it's just going to be able to gain 25% or 25 more armor and magic defense. One more stack. And then the uh, normal attack range of Tactical Maneuver is increased for the first shot after. So the double shot that you get when you tr when you trigger Tactical Maneuver is increased from seven meters to seven and a half meters. It's actually a pretty big deal. Anytime you increase range on a marksman, it, it matters. So I've now got more range and higher stack capabilities on Morin, which makes me a happy guy. Um, <clears throat> their idea behind it was that he was kind of um, stripped of some of his like luster and some of his power that he had previously with the balance changes. They went a little too far, so they gave a little bit back to him, which is going to make him better in the jungle and better just overall. Um, definitely a buff. What this does to Morin, guys, is it makes them be able to shoot guys under tower. A little bit better it makes him able to shoot towers even better um, because he could already shoot them outside of tower range with his first ability but now he can do it um, he, he, just a little bit more safer but overall I think uh, if you're playing against more you just need to be careful that double shot late game is extremely powerful and now I can do that from further away um, and he's a little bit more tanky so overall I think the buff is probably a five but it is a buff yeah like I said anytime you increase range it's a buff um yeah all right and i really like that they gave back a stack yeah because i like i like the original 10 stacks it was almost like a, a challenge for like experience yeah i mean to it, roll those and keep mm. them going <clears throat> and then they suddenly nerfed it to seven and it was like oh well that's not as hard to get keeping there. the stacks is so hard I, I didn't really see a need to really nerf them that much because it's a reward for people that yes, can do it exactly uh all right next is teamy chain lance is the uh, second ability for Teamy. Let me go to him. <clears throat> that shoots out. Remember the land second ability shoots out and grabs people. They change the flying speed of it from 21 meters per second to 16 meters. So it's going to be a little bit easier to dodge. So it wasn't giving you very much time to react. Now it gives you time to react and dodge, which I'm kind of excited about. Next is Max the Wonderkin, who is also a tank. And they are changing the true damage from his passive static shock reduced from 30 plus 4 times hero level. Um, so plus 4 for each hero level and a scaling ratio of 0.22 to a scaling ratio of 0.18. So they only reduced the scaling ratio a little bit. So it's not a huge nerf. Um, you're really not going to notice a change whether you're playing as him or against him. It's a 1. 
Yeah, their their mm. thought process, as they were saying, is basically if he's solo laning. That's what they were trying to make an adjustment mm. for. Uh, well, the next change is to Malak. We're going to go over it, but we don't have anything to show you on Malak because we don't even have Malak on ANA yet. But they reduced... Yeah, and we're not going to log into you. <laughs> yeah, they reduced the physical damage up by his cleave ability. Um, and they rescaled his shield to be... Uh, to do less it, it, less space and more scaling so he got oh he they really both rescaled because the ad scaling on the cleave is also higher now so they just kind of made him more ad dependent attack damage dependent rather than in reducing the base of these things um <clears throat> so then we have tara They're trying to shift him to more warrior and less tank right, right, right. next is going to be another tank Kind of, not really a tank Tara. Increased physical damage of Whirlwind, which is her second ability. From 150 starting to 150 starting. Oh, it's the same thing. They just changed the scaling from 0.55 to 0.6. So they're trying to make her a little bit better in her solo lane action. Uh, next is Arthur. <clears throat> Arthur is getting a buff. Oh, I'm excited about they this. They increased the magic damage of Holy Guard, which is his second ability, which is the one with a sword spin around him. From 150 to start. This is just an increase in oh sorry. Um it's just an increase in the 80 scaling from 0.4 oh, 0.35 80 plus 0.4 80 AP to 0.4 AD. And so they, they increased the scaling of the attack damage on him from 0.35 to 0.4. That's it. And they did a complete visual redesign of the hero. Uh, so let you guys see it. Actually, looks sick. I think I love the dark yes. gray on him. The dark uh, gray looks yes. boss. The, the the bit more damage because you're already stacking AD mm -hmm. items is nice yep. to get a little more damage on him. I like that. But what I really like is the redesign. It looks awesome. They wanted him to look like a total boss and they didn't want more realistic. Like He's got a I mean, big bad silver. Yeah. He looked kind of cartoony, kind of fakeish. Now he looks yeah. like a real bad mofo and he's got the yeah. eagle on his shoulder which is dope his sword looks a little bit bigger i love it i love it um all right this will allow you to provide a lot more burst by having more damage sword of course it, it, and it makes the my eagle. build you, for him even more effective. always oh it does it does your build's gonna be even better than it was the the thing about this sec this ability to that second ability you're always having those spinning around you anytime you go anywhere and damage anybody so it's just more gravy so if you're playing as Arthur, your massive AoE damage is more. Playing against him, it's more. And the buff, I'd say, is a three to four. I, let's yeah. call it a seven because of how awesome he looks now. He looks so much better. <laughs> yeah, that, as I say, that'll bring it up some just by itself. All right, moving on to we're at the, we're in the bottom three, guys. I know it's been a long video, but we're on the home stretch now. Zeniel, um, they're rescaling the cooldown of Malius, which is one of his abilities. Um, it's going to be longer early game, but even out to the end game. And they decrease his base armor from 125 to 113. So they're just making him a little more balanced out. A little bit of a nerf. Uh, Lubu, days duration after knocking enemies into the air with Red Stallion decreased from 0.5 seconds to 0.25. So that's actually a pretty significant nerf. If you're playing as Lubu, your cooldown reduction just got knocked in half for your knock up. Yeah. Uh, knocked off in half. So. If you're, and if you're playing against them, you'll be able to react faster after getting knocked up. Um, <clears throat> so I'd say this is a nerf of about a four. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to go anywhere from a three to a five, but it all depends on the skill of the loop. Right, exactly. So, all right, guys. And last, but certainly not least, we didn't, we love the Arthur skin so much, we left it up there for you guys to look at even longer. Um, but last <laughs> and certainly, certainly not least, is a buff coming to yours truly. My bae. My homeboy, Wukong, Wuking, Wu Boss. And <clears throat> this is what it is. A monkey business, his ultimate. Which as you guys know in the past, he's been able to hit it to do a large AoE damage slash stun. Has been buffed. Now it does a large AoE damaging stun, but it also can be hit again within five seconds making Wukong go invisible and increasing his movement speed for one second. Now, I will say the second use does not re-trigger the passive God of War, which makes, which is the one that gives him the increased attack range and the massive extra auto attack hit. But, um, for now, this is what the designer notes say. I want to read them to you. 
so you guys who watch the channel a lot can laugh about it. It is almost impossible for Wukong to escape from battle. This should make it easier to escape when a situation goes south. So as you guys know, it's only impossible to escape from battle if your name is not Etan Sun. You guys know that every single stream and every single time I play Wukong, I have some of the most epic escapes on him ever. And now I'm going to be able to do it that much more. So for me, this is massive. As a Wukong player, this gives me even more tools to wreck faces with than before. To bo both offensively and defensively. I'm going to be able to get out of dodge that much more than I did before. And I'm going to be able to use it offensively. If I go in, I do it and I ult. I give them a second to panic, and then I can just go right back to just wrecking faces. Just fun, fun buffs. If you're playing against me as Wukong, run and hide. Hide your kids, hide your wives, hide your moms, hide all your teammates, because I'm coming for you, and I'm excited about it. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is a buff of about a, I'd say a 6 to a 7. I'm going to say 7. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. They said, people have been saying about this change, and I don't even drag this out <laughs> further, but... But they, they've they been saying, oh, Wukong will finally be back. People will be playing him. Like, people who know how to play him, he never left. Uh, exactly. He was, I mean, yeah, he, he's been, you guys know he's been in my meta. So, um, yeah, Wukong is just even that much stronger now. But I'm excited, guys. This is so many great changes. I know it's a bit of a long video. We might cut it into two if we have to. But... Thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the incredible hero balance changes and the explanations as to what exactly they each are, how they affect you if you play with somebody and or against them, and of course, how severe those nerfs and buffs are. But again, thanks for watching guys, and as always, until next time.